This is lecture 9 of ECE 113 Communication Electronics. And in this lecture, we'll be talking about the modern approach to filter design. Basically, we're going to use passive components such as inductors and capacitors to create a response, a filter response that we want. From the previous lecture, we implemented a Butterworth filter and a Chebyshev filter using active biquad filters and biquad filters in general. If you want higher order filters, you have to cascade biquad filters. And in that, it becomes very much uh, more complex, rather, compared to what you will see in this lecture. In practical applications, though, the filters that you will design from, or you will learn how to design from this filter is useful to above around 400-500 megahertz. This is due to the nature of your capacitance and inductance that you will use to design the filters. Let's get to it then. So your modern filter design. The procedure is outlined quite simply in this flowchart as you see here. First, you get the filter specification. From the filter specification, you'll get the filter order. From the filter order, you have your low-pass prototype. The low-pass prototype, from here, you upscale that in frequency and impedance. And from there, you now implement it. Quite simply. Basically, you have to start at the specifications, always. And the low-pass filter prototype, Let's see how it is designed. Your modern passive filter is composed of a ladder. Basically, an inductance and capacitance ladder. The simplest uh, implementation would be an inductance that is in series. Oops. Inductance that is in series and a capacitance that is in parallel. Okay, a series inductance and a shunt capacitance. So as you see here. Okay, so it's an LC ladder. You want to increase the order of the filter, you need to add more elements. So let's say here's your inductor, capacitor, and then another inductor, and then another capacitor. There you go. So this is for in this case, you have a fourth order low pass filter. So basically the assumption here is that the ladder is lossless, which makes all the elements be purely reactive. And the number of the reactive elements inside is the filter order. What are the reactive elements that are possible okay, that possibly use in the LC ladder? So, the top side of this slide are the low-pass elements, a series L and a parallel LC. The middle would be your high-pass elements. This is your series C and parallel L or shunt L. And the band pass is when you have a resonant circuit containing a parallel L and C. And you'll see how we'll use all this if we connect all them okay, for these two comprises of low pass or it creates the low pass filter a combination of these two creates a high pass filter a combination of this in chain with a series lc circuit creates your band pass element so let's get to it how uh, what is the mathematical derivation of this lc ladder the assumption here is you have an a source resistance rs and you're supplying power to a load resistance R sub L. So generally, your modern filter uses a combination of the previous aforementioned circuits or aforementioned elements. Let's say you have an input impedance seen here. So it's due to your lossless ladder and your R sub L here. Okay. So the lossless ladder has a voltage input V1 and a voltage output V2. 
The power at the load side is basically one half of V2 squared times RL. So V2 here is a function of frequency. And you take the magnitude of that squared divided by 2, you get your uh, times R sub L, you get your power that is developed at the output side of the ladder. The maximum power that, it, that will be absorbed by the ladder, so the maximum power absorbed by the ladder is basically V1 squared over 2RS. Right? This is the maximum power that will be transferred here. And where did this come from? Because in the matched condition, so we assumed that we have a matched condition, that means Z in is equal to RS. In this matched condition, this RS, the power developed in this RS is equal to the power that is developed here at the uh, P1 maximum side here. Right? This is when you have a matched condition. The power here is equal to the power here. That's why the P1 max is in terms of R sub S, which is basically just Vs quantity squared over, this should be 8 times Rs. So, your lossless ladder would have this equation. The transfer function is basically the power here divided by the power here. So, the transfer function squared, rather, of the lossless ladder is P2 over P1 max, the maximum power here. So, we're assuming the maximum power, or power transfer from your R sub S to your load R sub L. So that's why you have this equation for the magnitude squared of your filter response or your lossless ladder response. And this is less than or equal to 1 since it's passive. If it's greater than 1, then you are adding gain or there's a gain developed in the circuit. Since it's only passive, only contains passive element, the max passive elements, the maximum value of this is equal to 1. Right. So your transfer function of this lossless ladder is equal to this 2 square root of rs over rl times v2 over vs and this v2 over vs corresponds to the transfer function of the whole circuit so h of s is the transfer function of this lossless ladder t of s is the transfer function of the whole circuit itself if we let z in be equal to r in plus j x in this is a function of frequency, mainly because all the elements here has an, have an impedance that is a function of frequency. So if you're given your transfer function for your ladder, how do you get the total transfer function of the circuit? So your current that is going inside the ladder is equal to Vs divided by the sum Rs plus the input impedance seen here at the uh, input side of your lossless ladder. So at the maximum power transfer condition, the power developed at 1 is equal to the power developed at 2. Okay, the power here is equal to the power here. Maximum power transfer. The power 1 is equal to Rn times I1 squared. So that is the uh, real part of this, which is Rn, times I1 quantity squared. And at maximum power, your Jx in would disappear. Your inductors and capacitors would basically cancel each other. So the maximum power here is the uh, input resistance seen here times I1 squared. And the power 2 is basically the output voltage divided by the load. Okay. So you have this equation. And then we'll uh, express this in terms of V2 over Vs, which is the transfer function of the whole circuit. So basically, you cross multiply this Vs here, and this RL will be go will go up. So the transfer function of the whole circuit, the magnitude square, is basically a function of your input impedance, load impedance, source impedance and the input total input impedance okay so this t of j omega defines h of j omega so just substitute this function of t of j omega j omega here 
and you get this fun equation rather for your h of j omega excuse me so h of j omega is equal to this so remember the input impedance is a function of frequency the input resistance is a function of frequency and the input impedance is a function of frequency you can further break this further break this down actually uh, basically this transfer function is equal to 1 minus this equation right here and this equation sorry wait it's this equation right here basically this uh, va this expression rather right here is what we call the reflection coefficient so we can uh, denote it as gamma so your transfer function is basically 1 minus some reflection coefficient gamma. So let's have an example. Let's say you have a simple LC ladder, just a second order. And we want to make a maximally flat response. So for a second order filter, the magnitude squared of your LC ladder should be 1 over 1 plus omega raised to the fourth power. What should be the value of LNC and RS and RL to make this happen? So, recall, again, this H is basically 1 minus the reflection coefficient. And basically, we're going to use the reciprocal of H of J omega, which is, again, H of J omega is kind of the gain. So, the, its recipro reciprocal would be the power loss. So the power loss ratio is basically 1 plus omega raised to the 4, okay, which is equal to this. So your gamma squared is the reflection coefficient. Okay, let's normalize that. So let's say RS and RL is equal to 1. That's why your reflection coefficient has this uh, values inside. Your RS here is equal to 1. You simplify this, you'll end up with this equation. So Z in here is basically the input impedance seen at this point at the circuit. So that's the input impedance with RL, C, and L. So basically that's just J omega L plus the parallel connection of these two. Okay. There you go. This is your Z in. If we add that to the conjugate, the only thing that will be left here is the real component. And the real component is basically this R over 1 plus omega squared R squared C squared. That's why Z in plus Z in conjugate is this. Finally, if you get the magnitude squared of Z in plus 1, that's the real component plus 1. And you take the square of that plus your imaginary component quantity squared. Right. So now we can simplify that. Substitute that to the power loss ratio. You have this. And you further simplify it. So I won't go over the details. This is the simplified version of your power loss ratio. And that should be equal to 1 plus omega raised to the fourth. If we compare terms, if we are comparing terms, this uh, constant here, that is 1, should be equal to the constant from this equation at above, which is 1 plus this equation right here. So this is the constant. 1 plus this should be equal to basically 1. This uh, value inside should be 0 because there's no omega squared in the resulting uh, polynomial for your Power, uh, your power loss ratio and finally this value right here should be equal to 1 since the coefficient of omega to the fourth here is 1. So by comparing all those values the load resistance should be equal to 1 your L and your C should be equal to square root of 2. So this is now what we call a low pass filter prototype for your second order Cheb uh, Butterworth filter. And you can do that, you can extend that to any value of n, but when n becomes large enough, the derivation actually becomes impractical because you have a lot of elements, right? And try. 
like, I, I urge you to try to find the transfer function of this low pass filter prototype. What should be the value of C1, L1, C2, L2, C3, L3, and R sub L, assuming RS is equal to 1? What should be the value of all these so that we have the desired response? It's hard to analyze. Luckily, somebody already did this for did it for us. And the result is a table of values in your low pass filter prototype. So it's a low pass filter because when f is equal to zero, all the capacitances are open and all the inductances are shorted. All the power from your source gets to the load. It's low pass because if f approaches infinity, none of the power here actually gets to the load since all the capacitances are shorted and all the inductances are open. Okay? So same is true with this one. Okay? So it's a low pass filter prototype since it's uh, the source resistance is normalized to 1. And the values of all these is basically found here. So the Butterworth of prototype values should have these values right here. For a first order, your uh, G1 is 2. That means, sorry, the value of the first element should be equal to 2. And your G2 is equal to 1 your load resistance should be equal to 1. So this is an application of this table right here. For a 0.5 dB Chebyshev type 1, this is the table of values. For a 3 dB ripple, these are the table of values. Okay. After you get your low pass filter prototype, take note again that its cutoff frequency is 1 radians per second. And its input impedance or input resistance, rather, is equal to 1 ohm. You will have to trans, uh, transform this filter into a suitable response. Aside from it being just a low-pass filter, you need to transform it to a band-pass filter, band-stop filter, or high-pass filter. And you need to scale it up such that it would accommodate an, an input resistance of maybe 50 ohms, 100 ohms, or 75 ohms, 150 ohms, whatever is given. Okay, so your low-pass filter prototype, I've uh, said this previously. This is, uh, you want to design this for a desired cutoff to the actual source resistance. And the transformation is this. So you don't need to think much about these equations. Okay, uh, the steps are just something like this. Okay, so... I I see. I'll, I'll, I'll discuss it. The effect of normalization with respect to RS is that the impedances of your elements would be divided by the RS. So if we have some given RS, the impedance of all our elements should be scaled accordingly such that the response would still be the same. So if RS is 1, sorry, if RS is 50, the actual impedance of, um, rather the normalized impedance of your elements would be divided by R sub S. Right? If for an inductor, basically that's J omega L over RS for a capacitor that's 1 over J omega C RS. That would mean that L sub N, the normalized uh, inductance, is equal to L divided by RS. And the normalized capacitance would be Rs times C. So this is the effect of your normalization with respect to Rs. For admittance, you follow the same logic. But in this case, since it's this is resistance, you multiply your actual uh, admittance to R sub S. Okay. So at a frequency that is at cutoff, your normalized impedance or normalized impedance would just be divided by a scale of omega c. Okay? For your inductance, for your capacitance, you will multiply it with the scale of omega c. Basically, in this case, you just let your new omega be equal to the old omega, let's say omega prime, divided by your cutoff frequency omega c. 
So this is actually the effect of your normalization to the circuit. So if you reverse this process, you should be able to get a suitable value for your capacitor and your inductor such that you are operating at a cutoff frequency of omega c and an in a resistance, source resistance of 50 ohms or whatever uh, R sub s you have. So that is the, the, the normalization process. So you get this value for your capacitance and this value for your inductance. After that, once you have denormalized the filter, you have to transform them into suitable components such that they will behave according to what you need. Is it low pass? Is it high pass? Is it band pass? Is it band stop? Your, it, your low pass, uh, in your low pass filter, you have a series L. To make it high pass, you have to transform it into a capacitance. Take note that at resonance or at cutoff rather, the impedance of this uh, inductor should be equal to the impedance of this capacitor. So they have the same impedance. Okay? So at omega c, they should have the same impedance. So the impedance of this is omega c L. For this, it's equal to 1 over omega c times over omega L. <clears throat> okay. So that is your filter transformation. Once you're going to convert this to a bandpass response, your series L will become a series LC. Okay? A series LC will be short at resonance, so it's ideal for a bandpass filter. A band stop would be a parallel LC circuit. Okay? And the values would be these. Omega naught times delta, where delta here is equal to omega 2 minus omega 1 over omega naught. Basically, it's defined by your cutoff frequencies. Okay? And for your shunt capacitor, your low pass, for your high pass, it will be a shunt inductor. For band pass, it will be a parallel LC, since at resonance, this will be open. At resonance, this is short, so short and open. So a series short and a parallel open is the ideal condition for maximum power transfer. And if it's band stop, your parallel or your shunt C will become a series LC. And the values or the uh, formulas are already here. So just some notes. Your high pass filter is the inverse of a low pass filter. Uh, that means your normalized impedance should still be the same. Normalized impedance should still be the same. However, you change the elements. Your bandpass filters have a certain value of Q, but the normalized prototypes have Q is equal to 1. So to change the value of, to manipulate the value of Q, you must also scale your elements such that you have a certain Q that you'll need. Okay? And the tip for that is before you memorize any equations, is that uh, your reactive elements sh that replace one should have the same impedance at resonance. So at resonance, their impedances must cancel out and it must be scaled accordingly to the source resistance. So your C becomes parallel LC and your L becomes series LC. Band stop, you just inverse your process here for your bandpass filters. Okay? So the modern filter design steps basically is uh, summarized in this slide so you can go back to this slide, slide number 27, when you need any clarifications or you when you need any guides for your modern filter design. So to further uh, establish the uh, impedance, uh, the filter design rather, let's have an example. Let's say we need a fourth order Butterworth filter cut off equal to 50 megahertz and the source impedance is 50 ohms. So the fourth order Butterworth filter has these values for its elements. So then you need to get or you need to conceptualize or you need to draw at least the 
<clears throat> normalized filter prototype, low pass filter prototype. So it's equal to this. So we're designing a low pass filter. Okay? So we don't need to change anything to make it what? High pass or band pass. Okay? So the first step is to denormalize it in impedance, that is by multiplying 50 to all the impedances of these. That means if you multiply 50 to the impedance, this inductance should be multiplied to 50, this inductance should be multiplied to 50, this capacitance should be divided by 50. Since the capacitance is uh, a reciprocal, quote unquote, a reciprocal value of inductance. Since the impedance is, sorry, the reciprocal value rather of impedance. That's why the capacitance originally you have here, you divide that by 50, also this one. And the next step is frequency denormalization. Basically, you divide all of the capacitance and inductance values by the angular frequency of the cutoff. <clears throat> okay? So your cutoff is 50 megahertz, convert that to angular frequency. That's 100 pi mega radians per second. So you divide all these by 100 pi mega radians per second. You get these values for your inductances and capacitances. Your inductors and capacitors. As you can see, your inductors at in, are in the nano Henry range and your capacitors are in the picofarad range. And these are all practical values of L and C. But if you're going to use lower frequencies, then this these values should be freakish, freakishly large, as you can see here. Okay? So another example. Let's say we want a Butterworth low-pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 30 and has a minimum attenuation of 30 dB at 65 MHz. Okay, so your source impedance here is 100 ohms. The first step here is not to convert to omega. It's actually to solve for the filter order. So the filter order is your cutoff divided, sorry, your uh, frequency stop band divided by your cutoff minus 1, which is equal to 1.167. From here, you'll use this table, sorry, this graph, to determine the order of the filter. Okay, so this is the attenuation curves of a Butterworth filter. So if you have an order n equals one, then the attenuation curve will be will have a less slope as you increase in order. Your uh, your what do you call this? Your slope increases. All right. So omega over omega c minus one is one point one six seven. Excuse me. So at that point, 1.167 right here, and you need a 30 dB attenuation, at that point you have this, then you need to choose the curve that is higher at this than this point. And that is when n is equal to 5. If you use n is equal to 4 at 1.167, the attenuation will not meet the desired specification. That's why we choose n is equal to 5. So this is the uh, normalized low-pass filter prototype. So it came from the table again, right here, at n is equal to 5, this, that one. Okay. So this, these are the values for your components. Scale that in impedance. Basically, you multiply 100 to all the impedances in the circuit. So multiply 100, 100. Inductance multiplied by 100. Uh, capacitance multiplied by uh, divided by 100. The next is to scale that in frequency. Basically, you just divide all of these by the angular frequency uh, of cutoff angular frequency. All right, more examples. This time, Chebyshev. So Chebyshev high pass filter. It's a high pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 100 megahertz. The minimum attenuation at 50 megahertz should be. 25 decibels, and your source impedance is 75 ohms. So in this case, it's now a high-pass filter. That means your stop band, which is at 50 megahertz, your, uh, to get your low-pass prototype equivalent, you just need to flip the problem. 
your cutoff will be 50 megahertz and your 100 megahertz will be the stop band attenuation with 25 dB. That's why you uh, divide your 100 divided by 50, you'll get 2 right here. And this table shows the attenuation curves for Chebyshev. So your uh, stop band, sorry, your cutoff divided by your stop band, which is 2, minus 1, which is 1. At 25 dB attenuation, it's somewhere here. You need a Chebyshev filter that has an order equal to 3. So if you use order equals 2, you don't meet the specification since the minimum attenuation is very low. That's why you use n is equal to 3. So you use your Chebyshev type 1 filter, and this is these are the values of your capacitors and inductors. The next is you transform these into their uh, <clears throat> high-pass filter prototype. So from 3.3487, you take the reciprocal of that, you get this uh, capacitor right here and this one also. For the inductance, you get the reciprocal of this 0.7117, you get the inductance. So this is now a high pass filter with cutoff equals to equal to one radians per one radian per second, and your source impedance is one. Scale the impedance to uh, let's say 75 ohms. It's the given. That's the specified source resistance. That means your capacitances will be divided by 75, and your inductance will be multiplied by 75. Then, to scale the frequency, since the cutoff is at 100 megahertz, you divide all of these uh, reactive elements by 100 megahertz times 2 pi. Okay, so this is for your low pass and high pass filter design. Now, let's look at the case when we have a band pass or a band stop transformation. So, for a band pass filter with resonant frequency omega sub zero and a Q factor given Q, or basically a bandwidth B depends on what is given. The cutoff frequencies may uh, maybe they are omega one and omega two. So just recall from the lecture about filters, the bandwidth is basically the difference between omega one and omega two. Your resonant frequency is the geometric mean of the uh, cutoff frequencies, and the Q factor is omega naught over the bandwidth. So this should be f naught over the bandwidth. No, sorry, it, it's actually omega naught over the bandwidth also. Yes, that's correct. Right. <clears throat> so our normalized low-pass filter prototype can be defined by the linear mapping function. So we uh, use this formula, scale it by Q, and we map it to omega, and we can use the value of that omega to determine our attenuation for our attenuation curves. So what I was doing here earlier, from here, I'm just getting the value of this so that we can uh, find the suitable attenuation, a suitable order for our filter. Okay? So this is the mapping. So let's have an example. We have a bandpass filter that is a Butterworth filter. Our cutoff is 90 and 110. The minimum attenuation is one at 150 must be 30 decibels. So your source impedance is 100 ohms. The quality factor and the resonant frequency, so we have to solve that first. The resonant frequency is the geometric mean of these two. So that's equal to this. And the Q factor is the resonant divided by the bandwidth, which is ap actually approximately 5. Right? So that's approximately 5. Again, you round that up. Oh, no, sorry, that's approximately 5, rather. And uh, first, we need to get the filter order from here. So transform this these equations to a, your normalized low-pass filter frequency, and that's equal to Q uh, times omega over omega naught minus omega naught over omega, where omega here is given to be 150 megahertz. So at 150 megahertz, the uh, omega for your uh, low-pass filter prototype, prototype <coughs> excuse me, is equal to 4.2. So 4.2 minus 1 is 3.2. It's somewhere here. So you choose the filter 
the order rather that is higher than this point, so that's when n is equal to 3, then you get your low pass prototype. After this, you transform the low pass prototype into their band pass. Okay, so from your low pass prototype, you have 1, 1, and 2 right here. Your uh, band pass prototype is basically you just augment all these. Your series L will become series LC. The value of the capacitance is the reciprocal of this uh, inductance right here. Same is true with this. Your shunt capacitance will have a C, will have a shunt inductance in, or an inductance in parallel whose value is the reciprocal of that capacitance. After that, you scale it using the Q factor. So how do you use the Q factor to scale? Depends if you're using series LC or parallel LC. Recall for your series LC that uh, your Q factor is X over R. For parallel, it's R over X. So that means the impedance of series LC circuits will increase by Q, right? since uh, the scaling is X over R. So if you're going to increase Q, you need to, uh, f uh, what do you call this? You need to f scale the impedances of your series LC circuits by Q. For a parallel, since uh, the R, the Q is defined by R over X, you want to reduce your X, your impedance by Q to have a Q factor of well, what of what you need. So in this case, the impedances of your series LC so it would be scaled by Q, which is 5. That means this inductance would be multiplied by 5. This capacitance would be divided by 5. Multiplied by 5, divided by 5. And for your parallel, your capacitance will be multiplied by 5 and your inductance will be divided by 5. So that's what happened here, from here, from here to here. After this, you scale your impedance, so that's to 100 ohms. You multiply the impedances of everything by 100. And then you scale by frequency, you divide all of them by the given uh, <coughs> cutoff frequency. In this, uh, sorry, the given cutoff frequency, which is now the resonant frequency. So you use the resonant frequency for the scaling of all these. And now you have your high pass, sorry, your band pass Butterworth filter. So just some final notes before we end this lecture. Your low pass filters and high pass filters are called dual networks. They are the inverse of each other. And same is true with the relationship with your band pass and band stop responses. So that would mean that would mean an analogy like your capacitance and inductance because they behave in an opposite manner which makes them dual of each other. Series LC and parallel LC also behave in a manner that is different. In impedance scaling, your inductances are increased since the, in the reactance of your inductance is, uh, li is linearly proportional to L, while capacitance decrease since your reactance of your capacitance is inversely proportional to your capacitance. And in frequency scaling, your XL and XC must remain the same at a given omega C. So that's why your cup, all of them will be divided by omega that you that is your cutoff or your resonant, such that it will behave in that way at a higher frequency. So just some notes to keep you uh, to uh, basically guide you in designing filters using passive LC circuits. So that's the end of this lecture. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next meeting.